<laughs> We're here. I got to flip the camera. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday morning service at Ithaca Open Bible this morning. We want to welcome those of you that are watching online both now and later. We've been having a good time of just uh, prayer and uh, worship before we even got online here. I'm giving people a moment or two to log on and, and get all prepared here. But uh, when we're done, if you put prayer requests up, I can't really respond to them while I'm preaching. But when we're done, I promise you, we will stick around. We'll go through and we'll pray for your prayer request if you put those up here. Also, I want to just prepare you that at the end of this time, we'll be receiving some virtual communion. So if you don't have bread and grape juice, you can substitute things. But I felt like the Lord told me that for now, we need to be receiving communion together each time that we meet together. Okay, praise the Lord. I see some people are getting on. If you're having trouble, just refresh, we don't see you. Just refresh your page and it'll pop up. On, my, on the David Adam page, it'll pop up. Well, praise the Lord. Let's pray and we're going to begin this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, we just come before you right now. We glorify the name of Jesus, praise the name of Jesus, lift the name of Jesus, and exalt the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that your name is far above every name, every name that ever was, is, or will be, every demon, every force, every power, every sickness, every disease must subject itself even now to the name of Jesus Christ. So Father, we pray that you'll come into this place today, encourage us through your word, and uh, I pray that your spirit will just go out, Lord, to those that are here in this uh, sanctuary today, but also to those that are watching at home today, Father. Let them feel the togetherness of the body of Christ. Lord, let them feel the presence of Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Like I said, we've already been having a time of worship before uh, coming live. But this morning, we're going to talk about a topic that, uh, I don't know, it might, it might be a little controversial for some, but I think you'll be really encouraged by it. We're going to be talking about the fact that Jesus defeated this pandemonic. We're talking about the pandemic that has up, upturned everybody's lives around the world. Unless you're like a, a miser living up on the hill somewhere, this has affected your life. It's affected every college, every university, every school, every household. It's just affected everybody's life. This pandemic that, that, that's circling the globe. I know that's not new news. We know that. Uh, but I want to bring to you this morning the understanding that this is actually a pandemonic. This is a plan of the enemy, an assignment of Satan that has uh, uh, been brought against uh, the whole earth. But uh, just stick with me. You'll understand. We're going to look at some things. First of all, uh, I think the biggest problem happening is the panic itself. Would you say amen to that? Amen. There are some saints in this place. Okay? The pandemic is terrible. We, we agree that it's there. We don't deny that it's there. But the biggest problem is the panic that's happening. You can feel the, the difference in atmosphere. Anytime you go out of your house right now, people are in knots. They're tense and they're worried. Well, I did a little bit of research. And I found out that there are actually many uh, medical uh, organizations that have studied the effects of fear on the human body. So the first way I want to look at this is scientifically, uh, 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 the effects of fear on the human body. The University of Minnesota did a study, and they said that fear directly impacts the human body. Okay, so panic affects the human body. Fear affects the human body. Here's what they said. They said physical health is affected by fear, which weakens the immune system, and it causes cardiovascular damage, gastronomical problems such as ulcers and irritable bowel syndrome. It causes decreased fertility. It leads to accelerated aging, even premature death. So in this scientific study of the University of Minnesota, they found that fear actually is killing people. It actually is like a pre-existing condition. And I want to I, I just uh, draw some parallels here today. Now, one of the things they're saying about the coronavirus is that those with pre-existing conditions are most affected. 
Have you heard that a couple times in the news? Yeah. Well, I just propose to you that there's a lot of people with a pre-existing condition of fear. And I want to tell you that that's making them more susceptible to this virus and all the things that are happening in the world uh, today. Now, I don't think that's a coincidence. Because every time God does something, he goes before it in faith. But every time the enemy does something, he goes ahead of it in fear. So this fear that has been released upon the world is actually part of a demonic plan to get people preconditioned to receive a sickness and illness and a disease that hasn't even touched them yet. Right. Now, we're very sympathetic and, and compassionate and empathetic to those that have had it. Again, I emphasize, we're not denying the pandemic. We're not denying the disease. You know, we want God to be merciful and to heal those people. But I am saying that before this pandemic hits, the panic hits. The panic weakens your immunities, physically weakens your immunities, but the panic also weakens your spiritual immunities. The devil would love you to have a pre-existing condition of fear that will weaken your spiritual immunities, that will open you up to all of his attacks. Because let me tell you something, when you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, the devil can't touch you. I said, when you're, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, the devil can't touch you. Amen. But if he can get fear into your spirit, fear into your being, he can get you conditioned for all of his attacks. So the panic and the fear is the biggest problem of the pandemic. The devil wants to weaken your spiritual immune system as well as your physical immune system so that he can hit you with his one-two punch and get you with something else. Now, that, scientifically, we know that fear has an effect on the body. But I, I want to look a little bit at the history. Not the history of the coronavirus because there's all kinds of doctors that are going to tell you that stuff. I don't, I don't have any of that, that, that. But I want to look at the history of how the devil works for just a few minutes and then we're going to come back to the word because we don't want to over. But you need to know how your enemy works. And here's one thing that I've learned about the devil. It's all through scripture. You can't deny this. You can't disagree with me on this. The devil's biggest problem is pride. Can you say amen to that? Amen. His biggest problem is pride. Do you remember in the beginning when he wanted to exalt himself over the throne of God? Uh, it was a pride problem, wasn't it? And it's always been. So what that tells you is that the devil wants credit for his work. He always wants to be acknowledged for his work. The devil wants you to know that he did it at the end of the day. Now, he may be sneaky and stealthy, but at the end of the day, he wants you to know that he did it because he wants the glory and he wants the pride. Now, just work with me for, for a minute because I believe the etymology, which is the language structure of these words, lets out a little bit of the enemy's pride and tells us a little bit of his plan. Now work with me, stick with me. I, I hope you can follow this if you're watching online right now. But did you notice that both the words panic and pandemic start with the prefix pan? Yeah. And, and did you notice that the word pandemonium starts with the word pan? That's not a coincidence. That prefix is coming from somewhere. That prefix pan basically means all or all-inclusive. Now, a pandemic is a pan, an all-inclusive dimic. Now, the dimic part, the dim part, uh, I, I guess also comes from the Greek, I'm told, and that means a people group. The ik part came from Old English. It made it more specific, specific. Okay, so you got pan from the ancient Greek, you got dim from the ancient Greek, and you got ik. Now, I'm not a language scholar, so work with me if it's not a hundred, you know, quite perfect here, people, with my pronunciation and stuff. So you did, the, the, the deck part is a specific group, pandemic. The demic part is a specific group. The pan part is all-encompassing. Okay, so what's happening is a disease that was in a specific group is now all-encompassing all groups. It's a pandemic. It's around the world, not just one Demic, but a pandemic affecting all the groups of the world, which first of all, just stop because I, I just want to give a, a reminder to the people of God here that the last time I read it, we are in this world, but not of this world. Amen. So this pandemic may be in all the groups of the world, but we don't got to let the fear or even the sickness and disease be in our group because we're the people of God. Yeah. We're not of this world. We're in it, but not of it. Now, I know that Christians get sick sometimes. We'll have that discussion another day because I want to stay focused on what, what we're on right here. But just basically believe God and speak his word. 
is what it comes down to. So, so we got this word pan. Where did pan come from? The all-encompassing or pandemic, all-encompassing all these groups. Well, pan actually goes back to ancient Greek. It goes back to an ancient Greek god, the ancient Greek god pan. Now, you're going to have to work with me a little bit here because I believe this. Some of you may doubt this, but that's your problem. I'm just going to tell you straight. The ancient Greek gods and goddesses are demon personifications. Yes. They're personifications of demons, either fallen angels or demonic forces. And if you look at the ancient Greek gods and goddesses, their, their attitudes and the things they did, it's very demonic. It's not biblical. It's demonic. And so we, again, we're knowing that the devil is a very prideful being, the devil wants credit for what he's doing. He exposed a lot of his plan in a lot of these ancient Greek mythologies. Now, just work with me for a minute. The god Pan, or the demon Pan, if you want to call him that, was a god that, uh, well, first of all, let me describe him. You'll, you'll be able to picture him immediately once I describe him. He's the one that has the goat horns coming out of his head, but a human face, and then he has the goat hindquarters and legs going down. That's the Greek god Pan, or the false god, the false uh, <coughs> deity, the, the, uh, Pan. And he's, he's the guy with the goat head and the goat legs, but the human body. Now, this, this Greek god Pan had power over shepherds and sheep. I'm going to wait for the profundity of that to sink in there for just a minute. He was believed to have power over shepherds and sheep. Now, i got to caveat this a little bit. I am in no way, I'm going to look into this camera and tell you and the people here. I am in no way saying that the people watching the home today are out of the will of God for watching. I am simply pointing out uh, a fact, okay? But if you're watching at home and you need to be at home, you're doing the right thing, all right? Uh, but I need to point out this fact. The god Pan was believed to be a god over shepherds and sheep. There's a lot of people doing the right thing by being home. But let me ask you a question. Are there a lot of people home today because they're scared out of their board? <laughs> Are there a lot of people home today out of fear because they're afraid? Yes. yes. Now, if you're home today in faith, you're doing the right thing. But if you're home today in fear or anywhere else in fear, you're in the wrong place. That's right. Yeah. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence that this Greek god or demon was the god of shepherds and sheep. Because I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of churches and a lot of church people that are in fear right now. Now, I'm not talking about the true church. I'm talking about the buildings and the administrative church in the, in the world. Now, we're going to come back to this, but I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of church doors that are closing during this time. Oh, yes. A lot of church doors are going to close. Now, God is able to close and open at the same time. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Okay? The church, the real church, is the people. Can you say amen? amen. Have we always said that? Have we always preached that? Amen. The church is the people. Well, now we're living what we believe. The church is not the building. But there are many buildings and organizations that will close during this time. Yes. The true church will not close. The true church will rise up and grow stronger in whatever form that is in. But this Greek God had power over shepherds and sheep. That's not a coincidence because many pastors and their congregations are in fear right now. Yeah. They're more afraid of a pandemic than they are afraid of the judgment of God. There are people that are they're, they're scared out of their gourd because of everything that's happening in our world today, but they still ain't got their life right with God. Explain that to me. You know, I did a little bit of research, and I found out that they got the death rate wrong on this thing. Because the real death rate is 100%. Well, Pastor, what are you talking about? No, it's 100%. Okay? But not just for coronavirus. If you were born, you will die. That's right. And it is appointed to man once to die and then to face the judgment. The only way that we'll escape the judgment of God, the judgment of God is through the blood of Jesus. Can you say Amen. amen. The blood of Jesus has made me whole, perfect, and righteous. Yes. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's a, yeah. a good place for an amen right there. But there are many people that are being influenced by this demonic power. Many shepherds and many sheep. Many of them are false and many of them are impressionable. And they're going to be separated in this hour. Now, once again, I emphasize, everybody that is not in church is not in the wrong this morning. Can you say amen? amen. I'm speaking to people that are caught up in a spirit of fear right now. Let the faith of God fill you and be freed from the fear. Now, I want to go on with this Greek god, 
Pan, because what happened later on during the Hellenistic period, they believed that he was the god that caused terror among armies. He became associated with panic, which would spread among soldier, soldiers in the heat of battle. So he became a god associated with fear and with terror. Now let's reach just one, a little bit deeper and then we'll move on from this in, into this, this Greek Roman god Pan. As we reach further back, there's an old story in Greek mythology. It's one of the original Greek mythology stories. Do you know the guy Zeus, the guy that's supposed to be the big guy in Greek mythology, Zeus? Well, here's how the story goes. Zeus had a father whose name was Kronos. Zeus wanted to steal the throne uh, from his father, Kronos. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. I said Zeus wanted to steal the throne from his father Kronos. So Zeus enacted a war against his father Kronos. I'm cutting out a lot of details for the sake of time here. Uh, you, can, you can look this up and do the research and see it yourself. So Zeus enacted this war against his father Kronos. Just as Zeus was overturning the armies of his father Kronos, the god Pan, who was also the god of the mountains and the, the wilderness, lit out a shriek. Ah! I know that's silly, right? Okay, so, but he let out a shriek. That's exactly what it says he did. And he claimed the credit. The god Pan said, well, it was my, it was because of me that Zeus won the battle. Zeus uh, defeated Kronos because I let out a shriek, terror filled everybody, and the enemy ran and fled in fear of me. That, that's true uh, from Greek mythology. That's, that's a Greek mythological story. Well, let, let me just bring this home. Where are you going, Pastor? What are you getting at? This pandemic and this panic is the shriek that is going out before the Antichrist. Amen. Because there's a man of sin rising up in this world. We've known it for many years. Yes. yes. And he wants to steal the throne. Just like Satan wanted to steal the throne from God. Now there are Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist has always been in the world. False messiahs have always been in the world. But the Bible is clear. There is an Antichrist. There is a man of sin. So what's happening in our world right now is, and I can go on the record as saying this because I'll be out of here before anyone can probably. I mean, Jesus is calling us home, people. Are you getting this? Yeah. Jesus is calling us home. But soon, soon and very soon, we're going to be with the Lord, but we'll occupy until he comes. But uh, this panic, this pandemic, is a shriek that is going throughout all the earth that is causing uh, organizations, maybe even governments to collapse and to be restructured, paving the way for the Antichrist to raise into power. The good news is, is that Jesus is going to call his people out of here, and the Antichrist will probably try to get credit for that, but as well. But guess what's going to happen? Jesus wins. I read the end of the book. Amen. He's already won. Come on, somebody. Now, I, I don't want to get any deeper down into that, man, because we want to get to the Word of God. That's where it's really at. But you need to understand this is not just a pandemic. This is a pandemonic. It's a satanic plan. Now, I just got to stop. I got to backtrack. I'm, I'm getting just ahead of myself here. And I got to say something. Some people say this is the judgment of God. Now, listen. Can't can the devil cause something and can God use it for judgment? Yes. God's not sending this pandemic, but he's certainly going to use the pandemic to, to draw many people back to himself. Can you say amen to that? God can use things that he doesn't cause. Now, there certainly is an element of judgment in this. Have you noticed that all of the gods of America have fallen in a few days? Yes. The economy's fallen. Athletics have fallen. Higher education has fallen. Within a few days, all of the gods of America have fallen. So make no bones about it. God is using this for judgment to draw people back to himself. And it's a good time to get right with God, people. But that doesn't mean that God's causing it. The enemy is causing it. Yes. This is the shriek of the enemy, yes. the panic and the pandemic of the enemy. But in the midst of that, God's raising up a people. God's refining the people and calling them unto himself. And saints, it's time to get ready because Jesus is coming and soon we'll be going home. Amen. Come on, somebody. I want to go to the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Now, we won't be able to get deep into this, so I really implore you, come back to this on your own. 2 Corinthians 2, 1 through 8, and meditate on these words. They are very timely for this season. But let's read it and just bring out a couple uh, points very, very quickly. That's 2 Corinthians, I said the wrong one, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, my bad, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 8, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 8. 
Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as from us as though the day of Christ has already come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Put your finger right there. Unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is to be worshipped, so that he sits as God enthroned in the temple of God, showing himself that he is a God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you of these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with at the brightness of his coming. Okay, so again, get those verses and meditate on them. They're very timely for this season. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 8. But now I just want to pull out a couple truths from there uh, for this morning's message. First of all, the word says that the revealing of the Antichrist will not come without the first being a great falling away. Did you read that? Did it say that in your Bible? Yes. Friends, I prophetically present to you that we're in the midst of the great falling away right now. I want to once again emphasize that everybody watching at home is not out of the will of God. Many of you watching at home are in the very center of the will of God. But let me just state an obvious fact. Many people that are leaving the church right now out of necessity are never coming back. You say, Pastor, that's negative. No, I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth. Many of the people that are leaving the church in this hour, physical, the physical church, are never coming back. Okay, some of them have been preconditioned with the enemy's fear, and they're going to blame God for things that are to ensue in the weeks and months to come. Someone said, well, maybe they never belong to us. Well, maybe not. Now, remember, the church is the people, not the building. We've got to make, make the distinction. And just because you're not present here doesn't mean you're not part of the church. But there are many people. There's a great falling away. There's also a great harvest. I know someone's going to put that on there. You should. Because there are more people watching or that will be watching this than would be gathered in this church. So there's a harvest. God is able to remove the bad and call the good all at the same time. We can have a falling away and a harvest at the same time. Yes. There is a falling away. Churches will close. Buildings, I should say organizations will close, but in their place, God will raise up new works, new churches, uh, restructured places. God will raise up because the true church isn't going anywhere because the word said that we're the restraining force. Well, you might say, Pastor, you're embellishing a little bit there. I don't believe that the Holy Spirit is leaving during the tribulation period because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's God's presence everywhere. You can't you can't remove God from anywhere. You know what's leaving is the church because we are God's representation on the earth. We are Jesus in the flesh. We are the restraining force. We are full of the Holy Spirit at power. And let me tell you, we are in the way of people that have a big agenda on this world. Yes. The restraining force is going to be removed. And then the, this stuff is going to come. Good news for you, saints. People get ready because Jesus is coming and soon we'll be going home. That's right. But the word said the day will not come unless there's first the great falling away. I propose to you that we're in the middle of a great falling away, but it's also a time of great gathering. We're going to talk about that. It says that the man of sin and perdition would be revealed. Okay, I present to you that just as faith goes before the Lord, fear goes before the enemy. That's right. Just as healing and health goes before the Lord, death and destruction goes before the enemy. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. The climate is here. The nations and the world are being set up to be destroyed and reconfigured into the image of the Antichrist. Do you, do you remember, I just told you a few minutes ago, that Satan reveals what he does through many of these false gods? There's a false god named, I believe it's Shiva, one of the Hindu gods, one of the big Hindu gods. It's that woman with all those arms. Remember the picture of the woman that has all of, all of the arms? That's Shiva. Shiva's job is to destroy and to rebuild in her own image. Mm -hmm. Her job is to destroy and rebuild how she wants it. Friends, I'm telling you, this panic... This pandemic and whatever follows after it 
is the enemy destroying the systems of this world so that he can rebuild it in his image. Now that sounds negative right now, but what we need to remember is that they're all just players in God's plan, even the enemy himself, and that all the enemy's doing is he's getting the world ready to receive Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus is physically also going to come back. First, we're going to be raptured out of here. The restraining force is going to be removed. The earth is going to be restructured under a man of sin, but then Jesus is coming back and we're coming with him. Amen. Come on, somebody. To physically rule upon the earth. Oh, I can just I can just feel the different opinions out there, but I don't care about your opinion. I care about the word of God, people, and this is the word of God. So don't you just love Facebook Live? <laughs> Good thing I can't see what you're writing in real time, isn't it? Okay, praise God. I'm sure it's all encouraged, and I'm sure that it's all very good and encouraging. Okay, so uh, the true church this is the day to be speaking that he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. This is the day to be speaking he's Jehovah Rapha, my healing. He's, he's the God that heals me. He's the God that sustains me. See, we've preached that. Man, we, we're spirit-filled people. We've been saying that for years. But this is no longer a dress rehearsal. It's like going to college, you know? You want a doctor to get a good education, right? You want him to go to many years of college, but then he has to pass the test before he can enter the practice. Yes. Many tests he has to pass before he can enter the practice. You want the education so that he can pass the test and be ready for the practice. Saints, you are, you are kings and priests unto the Lord our God. You have been in training for reigning and schooling for ruling. And I'm telling you, this is the day. This is the hour to be the church. This is the hour to run to the battle. I mean, oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Hey, hey, you want a prophetic word? Somebody wants a prophetic word. Here's what, see, the, the governments of this world are about to release a stimulus package upon the nations. Our government, you know, they're arguing how, how many thousands of dollars of stimulus should we release? They're trying to help people in their time of need and get the economy loosened up. Friends, I'm going to speak to you and prophesy to you right now that if you're a believer that trusts Jesus and you run to the battle, you're about to get a stimulus package from heaven. And I ain't talking about the money right now, people. I'm not talking about the money. You're about to get an endowment of power from the Holy Ghost on high like you've never experienced or witnessed before. You've heard of people praying for the sick. You'll be laying hands on coronavirus patients and you'll see them recover right before your eyes. I'm telling you, you're going to get an endowment from heaven. Some of you have struggled with sharing your faith and witnessing before, but there's going to be a new surge of power coming on you in these last days. God is going to do this thing. It's not about us. Yes, we connect through faith, but it's God's grace, and there's a stimulus package of His grace and His presence going to be released on the church like never before. Hey, I'm telling you, there are churches that thought they were going to close their doors before this thing hit. And they're going to come out of this thing stronger than ever because they put their faith in Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. God's going to release heaven's stimulus package on us uh, because while there's a falling away, there's also a great harvest that's yeah. happening. And who are the harvesters? We. We are, amen? You and me. Praise God. Well, uh, what's God doing during this time? Where's God at? I want to just biblically answer that question a little bit. Where's God at? What's God doing during this time in the earth? The first thing I want to say God's doing is he's gathering a harvest. Yes. If you want to turn there, go to Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Matthew, 20, Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to clear up some confusion. It's a parable of Jesus. It's the parable of the harvest. Listen to what it says. Uh, another parable Jesus put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat, and then went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then are, are there tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest you gather up the tares and uproot the wheat with them. Rather, let them both grow together until the harvest. 
And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them together, but gather the wheat to my barn. Jesus is telling us what the end time harvest is going to be like. Mm This will help you in your personal life, not just in the world at large. Let me tell you something I've learned. I'm going to be real transparent. The bad parts of my personality and the good things that God have done in my life often both come to harvest at the same time. I I must be the only person that's ever experienced that juxtaposition. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that you all know what I'm talking about. The good and the bad. You know, the best of times and the worst of the times are usually the same times. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yes. Well, that's because God has been working, but we have an enemy that has sown tares. And so God doesn't want to uproot the good, so he lets it grow together until harvest, and then he separates it. Friends, we are in the midst of that harvest time right now. God is harvesting. The church is being sifted. The church believers are being, uh, and non-believers are being separated. True faith is being discerned. God is making a harvest. I'm going to tell you, there are some people going up and there are some people staying down. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yes. Come on, saints. Get ready because Jesus is coming back real soon. Amen. Woo, come on. You know, you know, Pan, he, he put his shriek out and it said that, and, and Pan's shriek, the pandemic and the panic caused terror upon the troops. There's another shriek coming. It's a shout of the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's a midnight shout coming, and we're yeah. going to be going home. God's shout is going out on the earth right now, and it's louder than the shriek of the enemy. And God says, all that will believe can be saved. Confess the Lord Jesus as Savior, and the shout is going to go out and go He's harvesting the good and the evil. He's harvesting the righteous and the unrighteous. And soon we're going to hear the shout and we're going to be going home. What else is God doing? God is restructuring the administration of his earthly church to a kingdom of God model. Let me say that again because it's a mouthful. I said God is restructuring the administration of his earthly church to a kingdom of God model. Okay, there's the true church, true believers, and then there's the people that just look like church. Can you say amen to oh, that? Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about the true church. I'm going. Excuse me if I offend your sensibilities right now. I've always said I'm a missionary cap. Tra- I'm a missionary trapped in a pastor's body. What we're doing right now, we're doing it at a higher level and it's busier, but it's basically what we've always been doing. How many times have I said it's a great time to live, to be in a small country church, small groups, house meetings, small churches. This is the way it's been done from the beginning. Guess what things are going back to? I don't want to say I told you so, but let's just go ahead and say I told you so. But you know why I told you so? Because the word says so. This is how the church has functioned in much of the world forever. And it's the kingdom of God model. People met in houses and in small gathering places. And I don't care if it's a restaurant or if it's a bar or if it's an abandoned building. Small groups of people met in the name of the Lord, but we made up the true church. And I'm telling you, the business model mega church, I'm not against them because they do do a lot of good ministry. And believe it or not, I'm not against that. But I'm just telling you, God's restructuring Just like the whole earth is being restructured right now. Governments are being restructured right now. God is restructuring the earthly administration of his church. You want to know what it looks like? I'm going to make you do the homework. Go to Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47. I'm not even going to read it right now. Okay, if I'm upsetting you and you think I'm controversial right now, then as soon as you leave, you go to Acts 2, 42 through 47. But if you think that's good news, just say amen. Because the church is coming back to look like God designed it to look. And uh, you can read that one on your own. Okay, but what else is God doing in this hour? God is preserving, he's healing, and he's prospering his children in this hour. That he might receive glory in this world. I said God is preserving, he's healing, and he's prospering his children in this hour. That he might receive glory. Now you need to listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to read, I'm going to read. Let's just go to Psalm 103. The first... The first five verses of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all of your iniquities. He heals all of your diseases. 
He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm telling you, the world is in a turmoil, but we are not of this world. Amen. We're in this world. God's economy has not been shaken. That's right. The economy of heaven has not been moved. Right. And I'm going to tell you, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. And if he said that he healed all of my diseases and cured all, if he, if he forgave my iniquities and healed my diseases yesterday, does he do it today? Yeah. If he said that I will fill your mouth with good things yesterday, will he still be the God that will do that today? Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, don't give in to a spirit of fear. Give like always. Live like always, assuming that was holy scriptural living. Give like always, live like always. Believe God. Don't believe the terror that's coming upon this world. Do some wise things, okay? I'm not saying don't be wise. Wash your hands. I'm doing it a little bit more. Use the sanitizer. You don't have to touch everybody unless you're praying for the sick. You, you know, have, have a, a few... How... I just hate to come back to this, but how many times have I said have, you know, a week's worth of food in your house? <laughs> okay, that's still wisdom. That was wisdom two weeks ago. That's still wisdom today, right? Amen. Have a couple weeks of, of food in your house. It's, it's just, so keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. But know this, that God will give you health. God will give you wealth. God will give you prosperity. Pastor, how can you say that? Because how are we going to help other people without it? Yes. How am I going to go pay for, pray for sick people if I'm sick? How am I going to go help someone in need if I'm broke? How am I going to go feed someone if I don't have food? Now listen, it, it, it is a blessing to bless others. Haven't we always said that? Yes. Yes. It's not a time for hoarding. A time for preparing and being wise, yes. A time for hoarding, no. But if, he, if God would do it before, then God will do it now. Yes. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So God is still doing this in the earth. God in the earth. He is reaping a harvest in this very hour. He's restructuring the administration of the earthly church. And he's also preserving, healing, and prospering. His people. Amen. Because I love it that he heals us, but I love it when we walk in divine health. Yes. Isn't it better to be in divine health than even in healing? Amen. Amen. What should we do? We're going to close in the next few minutes here, but what should we be doing? We, we've seen what the devil's doing. We've seen what God's doing, in part, what God's doing. But what should we be doing? Well, here's one. We should be believing God. Amen. I'm telling you, friends, we need, it's time to believe God. It's not yeah. time to doubt Him. It's time to believe God. What we should be doing in this hour is believing God. But, but believing itself isn't enough. You know what else we should be doing? We should be practicing what we always preached. Yeah. Yes. We should be practicing what we always preached. Amen. Now, if, if, you, if you proclaimed, believed, and preached that Jesus was the healer, now's not the time to be afraid to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Now's the time to do it. That's right. If you believed, preached, and proclaimed that Jesus was the Savior, now's not the time to lock yourself in the house and not tell anyone. Now's the time to do it. Yes. Now, you can do it over social media. You can do it over the phone. You, you, know, you don't have to just physically be in person. But this is the hour to do it. We need to believe God. We need to practice what we've been preaching in this hour. Uh, this is what we've been trained for. We've been made for this very day. We are kings and priests under the Lord, our God, and he'll equip it. What else should we be doing in this hour? We should be running to the battle, not yes. away from it. We should be running to the battle, not away from it. We are God's restraining force in this earth today. The Holy Spirit is in us. We are Jesus in the flesh. And we are to be restraining the enemy and declaring the Lord's victory until he comes, just like we have always done. Are you ready to do that? Amen. You ready to believe God? Yeah. Amen. You ready to practice what we've been preaching? Yeah. And are you ready to run to the battle? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, we are going to, when we conclude, pray, but we're going to receive communion together real quickly. If we could just uh, turn real quickly uh, to the, to the uh, practice of communion. I believe that it's very important to do in this hour. I feel like the Lord spoke to me and said that for now we need to receive communion together every time we meet together. If you're watching at home, you can do this virtually. 
you can go, if you don't have juice and uh, bread, you can go get some substitutes. It, it's a special situation. It, it'll work. God will accept that. But uh, there, there is a healing in the act of receiving communion together. Amen. Now, I do want to say that uh, communion is for, a believer, for believers. And in the message that we proclaimed today, we saw that the enemy was doing things and uh, God was also, is also doing things. And I believe that he's speaking to hearts right now. He doesn't put a lot of conditions on it or any conditions other than we believe. He says, confess your sins and believe upon the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. There may be people watching this now or later. Uh, I'm telling you what, Jesus might just come uh, any, any time and you might be watching this before they restrict all this stuff. So you can get your life right with God right now. He doesn't require you to do a bunch of activities and a bunch of this and that and prove yourself. No, no, no. You believe God. You confess your sins and confess Jesus as Lord and you are saved. And the blessings and provisions and goodness of God will overtake your life if you'll do that. Amen. We can promise you. We can promise you that. There are others here that you already had health problems. You already had sickness and things that you were struggling with. This can be the hour of your healing. I don't care if it is a back problem. A, I, I'm seeing like fungus on a feet that you just can't seem to get get control over that. You don't have to raise your hand. I don't know if it's here or, or someone at home. But Jesus is your healer. We rebuke that fungal infection in Jesus' name. And uh, I don't care if it's big, little, medium, whatever it is. The blood of Jesus paid for our healing. So, Father, right now, uh, we just ask that if there's anyone listening right now that needs to receive you as Lord and Savior, that they would confess their sins and that they would do that. And that, Lord, those that have all manner of sickness, illness, and disease, Father, that they would feel the blanket of God and the goodness of God touch them and that that would lift off of them from this very hour. Yes. That they would begin to recover and rapidly recover. We also speak divine health over all your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise Amen. God. I hope you had time to get some communion elements while we were praying. Philip, if you could distribute to the small group of people that is here today, we would appreciate that. Uh, we do have a small group of folks here, and uh, if you want to get your things together, we're going to receive with you, because we're one church. Whether you're here, whether you're watching, we're one church, and we miss so many of those that can't be here with us today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what I want to do while the communion elements are being distributed. I want to go to a different passage than we normally read for communion. I want to just read Psalm 91. It is the psalm of the hour. Yes. It is the psalm of the hour. I know that my family, for the most part, has been reading it together every day. We've missed a few days, but, but basically every day. And I just want to, while they continue to distribute the communion elements, I want to read Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom, I, <coughs> in whom I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You will only see with your eyes and observe the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. Say, no evil shall befall me. No evil shall befall me. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. 
I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Everyone say, I want that long life. I want that long life. And I want that salvation. I want that salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a bread or something that you can sanctify as that, let's pray over it and then receive it together. Father, we bless the bread and thank you for giving your body for us, Lord God, to be a body. In Jesus' name, let's receive the bread. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you for this cup, which is a new covenant of blood. We thank you, Lord God, that we're not bound by the laws and the activities of the old covenant, but that we have the new covenant of your blood which is that we believe you and therefore we're saved by grace, Lord. Thank you for your incredible grace that saves us and for your blood that heals us. Thank you that by your stripes we are healed. And Father, we do this until you return for us, even as you've instructed us. And we thank you that you truly are our sustainer and our healer. Saints, let's receive the cup together. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope that you've been blessed through this time together of worship. I'm going to turn it off now, but we're going to stick around for a few minutes and we're going to pray for any prayer requests that were left on this feed during the preaching. I want to uh, tell you that on Wednesday night, uh, we will be sharing the Open Bible East Region prayer meeting. That'll start at 7 o'clock. Be blessed. Continue being the body of Christ. We're one body, even though we're in many places this morning. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Oops. I'm still on, I think. Hello. We're